I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this point justice, but what they've told you are your weakest traits are actually just the other side of your strongest abilities. The darkest, hardest, nastiest, most vicious pieces of your psyche and your shadow are the other side and the consequence of your most valuable superpowers. They wanted me to believe for years that because I was a queer kid, that because I was a disabled kid who was misdiagnosed, that because I was whatever to them, their mental models of me, whatever, that I had to hold myself responsible for their ideas of me, for their for their wants, for their whatever. And if I ever said no, said, you're too over-emotional, you're crazy, you're insane, you're too sensitive, you know, whatever, all these things that I was told by the guy who raised me. And it's like, anytime I see these, like, trolls, these vampires online, that's all I see. That's all I see is my first bully. It's like, there's nothing you can do to me that he didn't do to me or that family, friends, or other people didn't already do to me. You know, like, you can't do anything to me that someone hasn't already tried or done to me successfully before. So anything I'm being told, it's a repeat of something that's already happened in the past. And yes, I am autistic. I am an extremely sensitive man slash gender fluid entity and being. I am an extremely sensitive spirit. I'm so sensitive that my hearing, I can hear everything happening in a room all at once and it's overwhelming. I can feel all the light in a room, any place I go, like a, a store, it's so overwhelming because all the colors and the light and all the all my senses are overloaded nonstop going outside my house. I'm so sensitive that going to a place hanging out with people I love, people I truly love, overwhelms me so much that I can only go out maybe once or twice a week without being so tired that I just fall apart and have to sleep. I've always been a very sensitive person. But because I am sensitive, my empathy is very deep. Even if I'm not able to express it outwardly, or you can't see it on my face, or I'm not able to reciprocate because I struggle with the social cues or I struggle with whatever... I feel it in my heart deeply. I feel things really, really deeply because I am sensitive. And I am so thankful and so grateful to be a sensitive person in a world full of cruelty, in a world that wants me dead, that taught me that people like me are unacceptable as we are, and we that taught me it would be better to be anyone else other than myself, and I'm still able to find some semblance of balance in my own life despite that. You are enough as you are. Your weaknesses, your shadows, are the other side of your light. And light cannot exist without the darkness and the difficult, hard, painful, destructive parts of human existence and consciousness, if you learn self-alchemy and you learn how to use your weaknesses, then you're able to make your strengths and grow gardens and forests and and galaxies and stars and a kingdom for yourself out of everything that they told you was just always going to be hell. They t wanted you to believe you would never succeed, that you would never be enough, that you would never be enough for them. But when you see through the game, and when you're finally starting to really, not just in like actions and words and other things, but you're feeling it on a core level, on a spiritual level even, you're going to be okay. Because you already know where you're at now is so much better than where you were when you were listening to those kinds of abusive people in the first place. But learning not to fall for the bait and other things, you are going to be so powerful someday that just looking at someone the wrong way, it'll shatter them. Someday you will be that powerful too. And what they want you to believe is like whatever is the worst thing about you, in our case, really, even aside from being gender fluid and transgender and 
queer and um, a DID system, a dissociative identity disorder system with headmates that don't present ourselves as humans. So our headmates in our DID system see ourselves as spirits. Aside from all of that, the thing that has actually been the biggest barrier in our life that has led to all the other stuff and the discrimination with all the other stuff we mentioned is our autism. Our autism is the thing people pick up on the quickest, but they don't know what it is. Our autism is the reason we get dirty looks when we cross the street and different things. Well, I mean, that probably in a combination with being openly queer presenting and different things. But, like, people know there's something different about us, and they don't know what it is. And what it is is our autism because it affects everything else. It affects our gender. It affects our DID. It affects everything else about us. It affects our experience of our trauma. Um, But my autism is a blessing. And I am a blessing, and my autism is just as much a blessing as it is a curse. There are so many ways I am disabled. There are so many things I am never going to be able to do that I've had to accept in my 20s because I went unsupported until my 20s for my autism. I didn't even know I had autism until I was 21 because people kept trying to cover up and they kept trying to just move me away or shield it or or ignore it. And, you know, it didn't go away because it's a part of my brain because it is my brain. It is me. I can't separate myself from my autism because my autism is me. And yes, there are ways that I am heavily disabled, and there are other ways in which I am more, I actually have more abilities, I would say, to people around me in other areas. There are things they can do that I can't do, and I am on SSI because I can't maintain a job. I can't maintain employment with my disabilities. I cannot maintain long-term employment, and I was fortunate enough to be able to get on SSI for that, but I'm not a burden, and I'm never going to let anyone treat me like a burden ever again. I'm never going to let anyone convince me that I'm a burden ever again, because I know now, I know on a spiritual level that that's a lie, that I am not worthless, that I am not your worthlessness, that I am not your shadow, that I am not your forsaken and abandoned and whatever. I am strong, and someday people are going to feel that strength. And someday people are going to know my name and respect me too.